Hello and welcome to the video. In this video, we'll go through step seven of the walkthrough series of SAP F5 documentation. Uh, step seven talks about JSON model. So what is a JSON model? Um, now in this step, it is about time uh, to, think, to think about the M in MVC, which is model. A JSON model is a client side model. It's a very important point to understand. It only holds the data, which is completely available on the client side on the application side. It does not have any mechanism to send updated data back to the server. The application need to call related methods to send any updated data back to the server. JSON model doesn't provide any support for that. In this step, what we will do is we'll add an input field to our app. We know that in our app, we already have a button which displays uh, a hello world message to the user in a message toast. Now we'll add an input field to our app and we'll bind its value to our JSON model. And we'll also bind the same value to the description of the input field. Basically what's going to happen is that in our application, we'll have a say hello button, which is already coming from uh, the previous steps. We'll add another input field and whatever text we write in this input field, that text will be updated in the description of the input field, which we are seeing on the right side of this input field. Again, you can download the code for this step from this particular link. Now coming to the controller file of our application, there are a few changes which uh, has to be done. The first thing is that uh, as we need the JSON model in our uh, controller code, so we need to load that dependency from the sap.ui.define method. Therefore, we add sap slash ui slash model slash slash json slash json model in the dependency list. And once all these dependencies are loaded, including the json model dependency, our callback function will get triggered as we already know it. Now, important point to note here is that we see an on init function. On init function is a lifecycle method of a controller. This, this function or this on init method gets triggered for the first time when the controller gets created. You can say it is similar to the constructor function of the, of a control. Now inside this uh, on init function or on init method, we will, uh, first of all, what we do is that we create a data object, which is again uh, in the JSON format. In this data object, we have a recipient property and inside the recipient property, we have a name property and we assign the value world to this name property. Then we are instantiating the JSON model. This is the syntax to instantiate or to create a JSON model. And once the instantiation is done, um, we set this OData object, which is in the JSON format already. We set this uh, OData object to the JSON model in the same statement. So here we are instantiating the JSON model. We are creating a JSON model, assigning it a name called O model. And at the same time, we set this data, O data onto our JSON model. Therefore, the O model variable holds our JSON model with the data, which has been defined here in this variable. Now for us to be able to use this JSON model in our view, we need to set this JSON model onto our view. So this is a statement to do that. We get the current view. This dot get view will uh, get the instance of the current view for this controller. And it dot set model method will passing the O model as a parameter. It will set our O model JSON model onto our view. Once this statement is executed, we can use our JSON model in our view. Now at this point, what we have done is that we have created a, we have created a JSON model inside the on init method of our controller. We know that on init method is the first method which gets triggered when our controller gets created. It is like a constructor method for our controller. Now, once the JSON model has been created, instantiated, and it has been assigned to the view. Now we come to our app.view.xml file. We can see in this XML file in this view, we have a new control for input. 
which is again coming from the sap.m library. Now, as per the description of this step, what we are supposed to do here is that we are supposed to bind the value of this input field to our JSON model. And this is the syntax for that. You see here, inside curly brackets, we have slash recipient slash name. Now, what does this mean is that if we go above and check our JSON model, the data which is assigned to our JSON model, it is in this format. Therefore, the value property of our input field is bound to recipient slash name property or recipient slash name attribute of our JSON model. And this is called data binding. Because of this data binding, what will happen is that whatever value we type in the input field, that value will get updated in the JSON model as well at the same time. Okay. Now we see here the description attribute or the description property of the input control. Here, what we are seeing is that within double quotes, we have a static text called hello, then space. And then we again bind the recipient slash name property of our JSON model with the description attribute or with the description property of our input control. What this will do is that whatever we type in the value property of our input control, that same value will be updated in our JSON model. And because our description property or description attribute is also bound to the same property of the description of the JSON model, whatever we type on the input field will be reflected in the description of our input control. That is the intent here. Now coming to the index.html file, we see there is a small change here in the bootstrap script for SAP UI5. We need to introduce this particular attribute data SAP UI compact version is equal to edge. This attribute needs to be introduced for this step in the bootstrap script. This is needed because we are using complex binding in our application to bind the description of our input control. If you see in the description of our input control, we are using complex binding where one part of the description is a static hello text and the second part of the description is bound to our JSON model. This type of binding is called complex binding. And for the application to be able to understand this complex binding, we need to have this particular attribute data SAP UI compact version. We need to have the value of this attribute to be set as edge. Now let us execute this code in Visual Studio code uh, locally in our system and uh, see the application running. I already have downloaded the application and uh, you can do the same. Before running the application locally, we need to have a manifest.json file inside our web app folder. We also need to have some changes uh, to be done in our ui5.yml file, which I've already done. Once these changes are done, uh, we need to execute npm install command, which I've already executed. Now I will run the ui5 serve command and uh, we will run the application locally. So the web server has started locally in this, uh, in this, in the system. We go to the index.html file. Here we see the say hello button on the screen, which is coming from the previous step. And this is the input control, which we have introduced in this step. Now we know that the value of this input control, we have bound to the JSON model. Uh, with the uh, name property, which is recipient slash name property. So whatever text we write here will basically get updated in the JSON model. And that same property of the JSON model is also bound uh, with the second part of the description of this input control. So whatever we type here will get reflected in the description of our input control. So that is the intention of uh, this tutorial that we can show how to use a JSON model in our SAP UI5 applications. That is it for uh, this video for step seven of the walkthrough series.
uh, in the next step uh, and in the next video we will go through step number eight uh, which explains about translatable texts so thank you for watching this video and until then have a nice day